So welcome back Alias, this is Navin Reddy from Tadisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about Hibernate Caching. Now if you're thinking that what is the advantage of using Hibernate instead of using JDBC, we have lots of advantages right? One of the advantages we have seen is ORM which is Object Relational Mapping. So is it the only reason to use Hibernate? Not exactly. In Hibernate we have some more features which is one, I mean, one of the features is Hibernate Caching. Now what is, what is caching or cache? So basically whenever you want to access the same data multiple times, instead of hitting your database every time you can use cache, right? So how exactly it works? So let's say we have our client here and then we have our application and then we have a database here, right? So whenever a client sends the request to the application server, that request goes to your, your database server, right? So let's say, you have a client here and a client want to fetch the data. So what we normally do is we create session object, right? So in Hypernet, we have to create session object, then we have to use transactions, right? So when you're fetching this thing, we need to use transaction, which is a part of session. So what happens is whenever, you, whenever you, a client signs the request to the application server that goes to database, it will fetch the data. Let's say I'm, I'm asking for select star from student so if i'm firing this query you can imagine how many data we'll be getting it, it is not one or two records because we are not doing any filtering we are saying select select star from student it might have 2000 records maybe 3000 records maybe 10000 records so in this scenario when you fetch the data it will be coming to your application server and the, from the application server it will go to the user so that user in that particular session right uh, but let's say if I'm again in I'm filing a query. So let's say I'm requesting the same data for the second time from the, for the same user in the same session. Okay. So in the same session, if I'm asking for the same records, it should not. So what it will do is it will again it will again go to database server. It will again hit your database server. And it will fetch data. Time consuming, right? So when you have done that query for the first time. It should be stored somewhere. So in your cache memory, it should be there. So when you when you run this query for the first time, data should be there in the cache memory. So that for the second request, it will check, okay, we have the same query. Let's go for the data here, right? And now this cache is provided by your hypernate. And this cache will be called as first level cache, okay? So for a particular session, so this is one session, let's say, uh, if I'm using session one, for that particular session, we'll be having a first level cache. But let's say if a user is changing the session, maybe the same user is going for the second session or we have another user who is going for second session. So we have two different sessions now. Now this two different session will be having two different first level cache. That means if S1 or in the session one, if you are filing this query, you have your data in the first level cache of S1. Now if S2, I mean the second session is following the same query. Now the, the, the data is not available in the first level cache of session two. So again, it will hit the database, right? So again, we have the advantage is if you are filing the same query in the, in, in, in the same session, Hibernate provides you first level cache. But if you have two different session, then Hibernate says, okay, uh, you cannot use first level cache here. Then we have to go for something called as second level cache. So basically it has two levels. One is level one and level two. So level one is by default given by Hibernate. Okay, so even if you don't want to use it, Hibernate says, hey, take this, take this uh, option of using first level cache. Right? Again, how to do that, will, that will say in the next video, but this is how your first level cache works you know, in the same session. So let's say I want to use second level cache. So what second level cache says, uh, says is, it doesn't matter how many sessions you have, all the sessions in the same application can share the second level cache, right? Now, Hibernate will not give you by default, okay? You have to configure this. So first of all, you have to use some third party library for this. So again, when you say third party provider, so we had, either we can use eh cache, that is one of the option, or you can use OH, OS, then we can use, uh, we have one more, we have Swarm, right? So we have all this uh, cache available. Now, which is best? 
so everyone prefer to go for EH cache. So in this in this session, we'll be talking about EH cache. Okay. Now when you say EH cache, how it works? So we have to configure certain things. Let's go for the first one. So let's say if I'm using a EH cache, you have to configure certain fields. Now what fields we have to configure? Uh, first of all, since we are using NAS, so let me just create a line here. So first thing, the first thing we have to configure is your pom.xml file because see when you say you are using eh cache that means you need to download that library right so that library name is eh cache you have to you have to download this cache from the maven repository you can go to maven repository you can ask for even eh cache you will get the jar files there uh, next you have to also download the jar file which is hibernate eh cache jar file again for the, this is for integration so this is the this is this cache will provide the features and this will provide the integration of eh and hibernate the next thing we need here is so you have to configure your hibernate.cfg.xml file in this see by default your second level cache is disabled you have to enable it so you have to add certain properties in your uh, hibernate.cfg.xml file which will specify that okay we we want to we want to allow or we want to give the permission so that we can use second level cache you have to configure that in hibernate.cfg.xml so first you have to give the permission second you have to mention who is your provider so our provider in this case is eh cache both this thing you have to provide in hibernate.cfg.xml file the next configuration which we need is you have to change your entity because by default, not every entity is cacheable. So you have to provide two annotations for that. The first annotation is called as at, uh, at cache. The second one is, in fact, the first one is cacheable. The second one is cache. So by, by specifying that it is cacheable, that you're saying that uh, you can use, I mean, this entity is eligible for caching. The second one is cache because you have to, pro, you have to specify the strategies. Okay, there are different strategies available. We have uh, read-only set again. When we start with the practical implementation, you will understand what I'm talking about. But we have to provide two things. One is cacheable, and second is the cache strategy. Okay, so if you can configure this thing, you uh, you are using the second level cache. Okay, huh. how exactly we have to do that? That we'll see in the practical video. But the point to remember is. We have the concept of caching in Hibernate. We have first level cache, we have second level cache. Whenever you go for first level cache, it will be in the particular session because every session will have its own first level cache. For multiple sessions, if you want to share data, then we have to use second level cache. Now second level cache for that, we have to use certain providers. We can use EH cache, we can use OS cache, we can use uh, Swarm. Uh, one of the best one is EH cache. So for that, you have to configure your pom.xml file, you have to configure your Hibernate file, configuration file, and then you have to specify uh, cacheable on the entity. Okay, so that's it. That's how you use uh, Hibernate caching. In the next video, we'll talk about the practical implementation. Ed. But if you have not subscribed to the channel, do subscribe. And if you like this video, do, do like the video. And thank you so much for watching.